Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about my mistakes, the things that I've done that I regret, I would do differently either way in building or in running a window cleaning company. So hopefully you get something out of it, but either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Hey, thanks for having a look or listen. If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully it is pretty decent. Sorry for my allergies, so I look like I got beat up. That's not the point, but this is available on YouTube or anywhere podcasts are. Uh, Listen, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you get it every single time it launches, and it launches every single week. So if you haven't listened or watched every episode, go back. Binge away. It's like 230 plus episodes. But I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. That's window cleaning resource. So if you need supplies, which we all do, I want to be your guy. I want to be that dude that you call or text at 862-312-2026 and be like, yo, put my order in. I got all this stuff. I need order. Uh, Let me know. That is how I make my cheddar, by the way. Uh, and it's an awesome, like, virtual high five. I get people all the time and just shop, put everything in their cart, and then instead of hitting, like, continue to shopping cart, they just shoot me a text and be like, yo, Jersey, it's all in. I take care of the rest. Crazy easy, crazy awesome to have your own rep, and even better for me because I get credit for the sale. So anyway, go do that. Shameless plug f- number one. Shameless plug number two is, of course, American Window Cleaner Magazine. If you like, if you are watching on YouTube, the sticker wall behind me continues to grow and grow. And these stickers come every month in American Window Cleaner Magazine, which is the greatest window cleaning magazine of all time. It really is. There's like posters and awesome, awesome stuff in there. Anyway, I digress. But thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, Oh, by the way, if you want to subscribe to the magazine, it's awcmag.com awcmag.com. I know a lot of you haven't gotten the magazine yet. You're like, why do I want a magazine? I get everything online. I know. But how cool is it? How cool is it? If you can um, have a paper version. I mean, what else are you reading on the toilet, right? Anyway, okay, cool. So this week on Nation, we're talking about uh, my biggest mistakes. And I can see in the camera that like my eyes are like all puffy and like, I swear I haven't been crying about all this stuff. Uh, No, but I do have some allergies, so I'm a little nasalier than normal. So don't let that fool you. These are still things that I've done that have sucked. And I really kind of put it into five. I usually try to put like five things. We'll probably do a couple episodes. You know, when you run a business, especially in the beginning, heck, anytime, you have to learn on the job a lot of times, right? So there's a lot of stuff that I've done that just was terrible, terrible. Just biggest mistakes in my life in business. And uh, a few of those, just for like an honorable mention. One, I thought it would be amazing to get a kiosk in the mall. This is back when malls were a thing. Get a kiosk in the mall and be like, uh, hey, gift certificates for window cleaning. Like, how cool is that when you can give that to anybody you know, especially like older people like to get the, the window cleaning done, right? You can't already have it. So you, it should be a great gift. Man, I spent thousands of dollars when I didn't have thousands of dollars. And it was going into winter, obviously, which sucked. And I got like one sale from the whole thing. It was the most confusing time. Anyway, honorable mention, lost a bunch. I know you guys probably have done things too where you like totally regret it. And by the way, if you can, hit me up on social media or reply on YouTube uh, to this video. Uh, but go on the Facebook uh, page anywhere. And what was your biggest mistake in business? We'll uh, go ahead and um, talk about that. I always want to hear. I love hearing other people's issues because it helps people. I'm a big fan, by the way, just to kind of get on, off track, is that if you ask me questions... I will almost always look for what negative things to point out because you learn so much more 
with negative things and positive things, right? If you come to me and go, hey, how does this look? What do you think about that? Oh, that's awesome. Good job. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I don't want to hurt his feelings. Oh, yeah, 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 good. I've just done you damage by doing that. That's why, in my opinion, you always learn more from mistakes than you do from things you didn't do wrong. That's why I always talk about mistakes. Mistakes are literally huge when it comes to learning. Learn from my mistakes. Don't have to make them yourself. And my number one mistake on this list was growing too fast. This one I try to convey to a lot of people because sometimes people sometimes people say um, that they're ready, but they're not. And here's the thing. Let me express this. You can grow as fast as possible. There is no growing too fast when it comes to doing it. But what there is a problem with is how you grow. So my big example was we talked about it for a month. I mean, we had talked about it for on and off a year. We're going to open another location and it's going to be closer to a bigger area so I can have another sub area in another state and then this one. And at the time, Secured a location, secured the phone numbers, the everything, the website, the all of that was done, ready, going. Um, when the day that I was supposed to send, actually the day before I was supposed to send, my operations guy down there, we got in a big argument and he didn't want to go. And it was one of these things that it just wasn't the time. It just He was the only person I thought was going to do this. And like part of what he needed to do, he didn't want to do. He misunderstood. Um, it just was one of those things where like, well, now I have an office. I have a phone number and all the stuff that I could advertise to a whole new area. And I can't because the one person that I hinged on failed. And that was not his fault. It was my fault. I didn't have enough things in place that I just wanted to have it grow. I didn't think it through strong enough. It didn't grow uh, healthy at that point, right? So the big thing was we ended up having an office and all this other stuff that never ended up getting utilized. And after a year, I basically just closed that down to focus on the main one. And then we'll re 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 jump off that bridge. The problem with that is, is that an initial start, an initial push is the hardest and strongest you could do. So for me, if I would have had everything in line, that would have been an absolute, game changer for it but i didn't do it properly and then i never could did it i just kept backstepping and just broke and spoke right couldn't get it back up to where it needed to be and i i have a lot of people I, i'll tell you another story on, on a mistake for growing too fast uh, i i showed up to a contract this is years and years ago we were relatively new and we got invited to bid on a project I mean, we ran numbers that ended up being like a 60 something thousand dollar window cleaning. And I don't remember what they actually, what the winning bid was, but that was where we were at. We were pretty competitive. So it was somewhere in that ballpark. That was for one window cleaning. And this was going to be done quarterly. It was like this huge account. It was, it was just this big thing. But the scope of the work was just too big. And I realized it was too big going through the quote and I never even handed the quote in. Now that ruined my chances for um, ever doing new quoting for them, right? Because when I did get to the size where I probably could have handled that or at least understood how to handle it, it was too late. But if I would have taken that on, I would have had to hire like three new people and then a bunch more uh, equipment. We were going to end up getting a lift and all this stuff and it was like if i had that in place or for one account you can't take one account you win it which means now you got what 30 days to get it done or whatever i can't do all of that hire people buy the new equipment i don't know how to use spend all that money time and everything to try to learn on a customer's job it was very very tricky to what we were doing and it ended up being actually in summer so if it was probably in an off season it would have been a lot um better for us but it was actually late spring so we were just so tied up and uh, i made the decision to not grow unhealthy and not even put the bid in would have been a changer a, a huge game-changing thing for 
pricing and projects and all that. But you can grow too fast. If you're growing unhealthy, something will go to the wayside. You'll wreck something, I'm telling you. And uh, by the way, not doing the scare thing, it's not what I'm trying to do. But there is a uh, real possibility, and I've met at least two or three companies that I've known that this has happened. Was They grew so fast, so fast they lost it, they lost control, and it was gone. Just exploded, gun, just to close it. And it's kind of like on a merry-go-round or something, you know, like something spinning. It'll do it for so long, but then there's that one break point where the whole thing just explodes. That's kind of what happened. Anyway, I digress. Don't grow unhealthy. Another one that I did that was a big, big, big mistake was keeping employees too long. I have a really big um, problem with that. That in the past, I've hired a lot of uh, recovering addicts and I've hired uh, people who were less immature than they should have, but I could see something in a lot of people. I could see it. It's there. I know it's there. The problem is when the particular employee sucks and does not learn, I still would end up hiring them back. This has happened to two different employees that I had that I fired multiple times. And then like one dude, like six months later, I was talking to him through somebody again. I'm like, yeah, you need, still needed a job and ended up firing him again. The other guy uh, came over to my house and was uh, crying to me about how he can't lose his job and everything else. And this is some young kid. And I'm like, man, all right. And then he just jacked it up again. As soon as he got it, he just like ruined the opportunity again. The big thing is, is that you've heard that like one rotten piece of fruit will ruin the bunch or whatever the saying is. What happens is look at it. A rotten piece of fruit, anything that that piece touches becomes rotten. And those pieces touch and become rotten. And those pieces touch and become rotten. And that is truly, truly, truly how employees can work. Now, we all know we need employees. We need great employees. And it's really hard to find employees. Part of the problem with that is, is because it is so much a chore. It's so difficult to find employees. A lot of us push it too far and keep employees longer than we should. And we know that. And I'm, I'm not saying don't give people second chances and all that stuff. I'm not saying that. But when it's over and over and over and over and over, it's more shame on me, not shame on the employee. Because at that point, they are toxic. And if you have a toxic person inside of your company, everybody it comes in contact with, every person, including customers, including other staff, including all of that, they are toxic and they will rot everything else that they touch. So the problem is, is that if you keep people on too long, you end up ruining the rest of the people. And I've had that with actual employees where that employee was just, oh, everything was bad. Everything was anger. Everything was this thing. It was just, oh, yeah, bleh. what happened is everybody around started complaining. I was like, not happening. Let the person go. I said, this just isn't for you. I know you're not liking it. You know, you're complaining a lot, blah, blah, blah. Within like a week's time, it was all back to normal and I never heard people complaining. There's something to be said with that. That transla translates, whatever word I'm thinking of, it to uh, customers. If you send somebody there and that person, they know that person just is not having a great time you know they're not having a great time, then they are going to push that onto the customer. Now, the customer thinks these employees hate their job. Why? Why do they hate their job? All this other stuff. They're not going to be happy either. Now, they're not going to be great. I didn't get a great vibe. Don't keep employees longer than you should because of convenience. It's a big, big part. Cut them when you need to. Always be hiring, ABH. Always be hiring. Make sure you always have ads. You always have people so that on the drop of a hat, you're ready. Don't make it so inconvenient. Remember, if something's uncomfortable for us or inconvenient, it's way easier to avoid that thing just for the fact of comfort. We'll talk taxes later, right? But don't keep employees too long. By the way, 
you guys know the story, but I had an employee one time. Uh, we used to do a shutdown, gave him money, a week off. He stole my work truck. And uh, I had to uh, get my own truck repossessed, uh, basically. So the the towing company took it as a repossession so they legally could tow it. It's crazy. Anyway, there's all that. Uh, another thing that uh, was one of my biggest mistakes in business was not focusing on booking the next appointment. This is more kind of the functionality of business. But when I started, my first... Man, until this really, really became something, I mean, I bet you it was probably a good five years before I really understood what was going on and started to improve. And I didn't really improve as much as I even should have before I sold my company. But a lot of times people are out there who say, I don't want to bug my customers. Uh, You know, they'll call me if they need something. You know, we did the service. You go, all right, hey, thanks. Have a great one. You're leaving the entire fate of your company into the hands of the customer. Into the hands of the customer. Customers forget you. They move. They, uh, you know, all of a sudden realize they need a window cleaner years later. You have to spend money to keep them coming back. You have to spend money to do uh, postcards and flyers and time to do emails and all that stuff to keep them, which you should still be doing either way. But the dentist theory is a game changer. And if I would have done that from the beginning, my company would be, it would have been 10 times the size it was, guaranteed. And the dentist theory is easy. When you go to the dentist, when you're all done, they go, oh, great, well, thank you, Mr. Jersey, have a great day. They give you a little bag. What's in that bag? You get a bunch of goodies? Sure, right? That would be like for you, postcards, flyers, that kind of thing, maybe uh, plastic gift cards. But what else is in there? a scheduled appointment for the next time to get it done. That's why you're there every six months. You know you're supposed to get it done every six months. So translate that now into window cleaning. When you're done at the job, okay, great, well, everything looks good, Mrs. Jones, and uh, the only thing we need now is to find out your next appointment. Did you want that in three months, or did you want to wait for the full six months? Oh, uh, let's do six months. That, that's a good time. I think we could, it'll stay relatively clean for six months. Okay. Well, that end up date is this, blah, blah, blah. Now, uh, a week before their appointment, I'm just going to send them a reminder. Done. What if you closed, what if 50% of the jobs that you went to, even that's terrible. You should be up at 90 plus percent. Almost everybody is going to do this. There's very few times that people are like, oh no, I'll just book it myself. Because now the process is there, if that makes sense, right? Just like the dentist, and I use that phrase. I always say, well, just like the dentist, we can book your appointment every um, three months. I always say, we can book your next appointment every three months, or just like the dentist, every six months. And then then all of a sudden, it all clicks in, like, oh, okay, okay. Most people go six months. What if 50% of your jobs you did? Think about We're we're wrapping up. When I'm recording this, we're wrapping up the year uh, 2021. In 2021, how many jobs did you do? How many different customers did you have all year? Let's say you had 100 customers all year. Maybe that's big. You're a one-man show. Maybe that's 1,000 customers. It's all up to you. But maybe you did 100 customers. If you did 100 customers in a year, what if you just happened to reschedule 50% of them? which is a terrible, terrible closing. That means instead of doing those 100 jobs, you now are doing 150 jobs. You've increased your bottom dollar. Those same people are going to get done every six months, every three months. Every person from there, you're going to automatically get in there so there's less work for you to chase, guaranteed work in the calendar, and you're going to secure yourself with frequent work, which frequency in our business is huge. I didn't do that soon enough. I didn't realize the benefit of taking control of the situation for first and foremost. And I didn't take into consideration how valuable it would be to get somebody to book right away. I tried a bunch of different things and kind of nonchalantly and it never really worked. None of that ever really worked. And I'm like, man, you know, it'd be really nice if I could just do everybody every month, you know. Well, 
you can do everybody every six months at least by offering it. Do the dentist route. I'm telling you, it would change your business. If I would have done that earlier, and everybody, you know, the best day to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best day is today. Kind of the same thing. Everybody says in hindsight what they would want to do. I would do that a thousand percent. I've talked to a dozen people, you know, who just since I've talked about this, have done it in their company and they're like, this is a game changer. Absolutely huge. But anyway, there you go. Not focusing on the next appointment and having them in the books already. That was a big, big mistake. Another one, and by the way, I'm going to preface this by saying I'm a sales rep for windowcleaner.com, of course. So I'm surrounded by waterford poles and everything else. By the way, this is from the Transformer pack. Um, really, really cool pull. Anyway, sorry, off track. I think that one of the biggest mistakes that I personally did, and I wasn't a rep then, um, was buying cheap equipment. It took me longer than I want to admit to find out that buying junky stuff and junky tools doesn't make sense. I don't know it's an age thing. I know when you're younger, you're like, well, this is a dollar and this is a hundred dollars. They got to be the same thing. There's such a big difference in quality and in reliability more than anything. And the big thing is, is in business, everything has to be reliable that you use because if it's not, you lose money. You lose money, you lose efficient. Efficiency is money. I, it took me too long to actually get that through my thick head. So it hurt me. I remember buying stuff multiple times in a year. I remember buying the, the, the wrong sized uh, pole. The first water fed I ever did this 14 years ago. Bought the wrong size pole because it was cheaper than the one, the bigger one. And I'm like, I don't know that I'll need all that. I was literally six foot short of those top windows. Six foot. I was turning keys over that weekend, lost that bid. Somebody else had to come in. I lost like $2,600 when I was new. It was a huge job, huge job. And I lost it because I couldn't reach it. Another time was I got a DI tank instead of an RO DI tank because I'm like, ah, that's okay. It'll just cost me a little more in resin. I blew through that tank. It was a three quarter cube tank in seven hours. I was on a well, seven hours, $181 in resin. For that, I could have subbed the workout. Like, Little stupid things that I've lost money because of that. Terrible. I bought cheap water fit poles when I first started too. I'm not going to tell you the brand, but they were fiberglass. Just, I mean, I could have, I could have never moved my feet and cleaned the whole house with the, 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 the pole. It was that flexible. It was terrible. I always felt sore. The clamps just sucked. It just, it took me so long to figure out that I needed to do that. I bought work trucks that were garbage. I bought used pressure washing equipment as backup stuff, which the dumb thing on that is that as soon as you use it as it one needed as a backup, it doesn't work. I've done a lot of dumb things. And it all comes back kind of to the uh, idea that buying cheap is wrong. I don't... I, it's hard for me to convey that now because people are like, well, you know, you're a sales rep, but I just don't have the money for an extra $500 in this package. The big thing when you're buying water fed, when you're buying traditional, when you're buying any equipment is just buy the right thing. This stuff's making you money. If I sell you a $2,500 water fed package or heck the Alex kit is out or the world one thing is awesome. Awesome. Dirt cheap. It's brand new. So it's super cheap by the way, check it out or call me, uh, whatever. But that is an RODI system for $1,500. $1,500. If that's $1,500, every other system starts over $2,000. You got more money now for a better pole. When you're saving some money, get a stiffer pole right out of the gate. I like the Ultra. That's personally what I like. The Micro Ultra is like my favorite pole. Buy a little bit better pole. People, ah, well, if I'm saving the money, it's not saving if I'm spending it. It's like, okay. So let's think about this. The pole and the brush are what you use to do the work. If they're sucky, you're going to take a lot longer and it's not going to be as efficient. You're going to hate it. You're not going to use it. This stuff makes you money. If I sell you a total package, say it's like 2,500 bucks, I could sell you that package and you could make that money back in a week with it. This is just 
stupid simple math and then forever from there it's paying it's paid for right say it takes you a month to pay off a system which that's a lot little work in a month but you know what i'm saying you're really looking at the difference between the system you're already going to buy that extra five hundred dollars to kick you up to a better pole makes so much more sense five hundred dollars that's like a job maybe two a couple extra of your jobs and that difference is paid for that's kind of what we're talking about in equipment now vehicles and uh equipment like computers and um water fed stuff and even traditional things all of that now is always new it's always nice i'm never going to have the stuff break down because of my own ignorance and it just makes it more reliable so don't buy cheap buy anyway again i'm a rep windowcleaner.com so whatever take it for a uh whatever you want but if you are looking for something, 862-312-2026. By the way, a lot of you should be memorizing that number by now because it's said so many times. Um, but another big mistake and kind of the last one to wrap this episode up is taxes. Now, I hate, up until now, taxes. I hate the idea of taxes. I hate, I mean, everybody, nobody wants to pay taxes, but I hate like filing taxes and then panicking and then not knowing all year and then having to owe a bunch of money going into winter or coming out of winter and it's, ah, so bad. So with that being said, the problem is I then don't do them or focus on taxes. Now this changed a couple years ago, you know, I said all this when I moved to North Carolina I had a great tax guy who like brought up an S corp, which by the way, if you're not an S corp, look into that hundred percent S corp. Um, and, uh, now I have a firm that does nice stuff. Like they are on their, they're on point. Like that firm is paired up with my, uh, uh, wealth management company. And that is also paired up with my HR company. So there are three different companies that all talk to each other, and that's how I kind of figured it out. So all of that stuff from HR to, uh, I mean, literally the last employee I just hired um, a couple weeks ago, which, yeah, by the way, there are, uh, I have employees also, just not in window cleaning, right? But um, was like super simple. Do the, the paperwork, done. Same thing with taxes. I literally get a form. I just got a form a couple days ago saying, hey, in 2019, which was uh, a, a year that I was between these new people firm that I got and the good guy that I really liked. Guy sucked. Hey, you screwed this up and uh, Social Security Administration needs to talk to you. Ugh. Put it on a uh, uh, scan, uh, get it scanned, shoot it over to them. They take care of it. Like stuff like that, I never did all of my life. So I always hated taxes. I never looked forward to it. I never did deductions like I was supposed to. I just didn't do any of that. And in turn, in turn over the past 16 years, I've paid, it has to be over $100,000 probably in, in more taxes than I should have. Or close. Maybe not. I would say maybe seventy-five thousand. But I paid. I've lost seventy-five thousand dollars over the past X amount of years in just not being doing it right, not doing deductions right. So I'm paying more in taxes, uh, getting it super late. So then I have um, uh, fees on 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 it. I had a payment plan with the IRS for like probably two years. This was back maybe ten years ago when my accountant I was still kind of new in business and the accountant screwed everything up and all of a sudden they're like, Oh, you owe like a ton of money, like 12 grand. And I'm like, I, by when they're like Tuesday. Yeah. Anyway, I've done all that. And it was all because I hate taxes because it just like made me hate it. So I avoided it. It's like anything. If there's a chore that you don't like doing or something, even in window cleaning, you don't like doing, say you don't like the paperwork. You don't like the office. Guess what? Your office work and paperwork is going to be the worst thing in your company. Because you don't like doing it. Getting people and surrounding yourself and just getting over that hump like this sucks. But if I just get it done, do it, I'd be so much happier. So much happier. So there's something like taxes that you're not focusing on. Don't go, oh, well, next year, you're never going to get to it. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Another thing to do now is get a subscription to America. 
<laughs> segue of spam. I'm sorry. But you guys know I do own American Window Cleaner Magazine. If you didn't know, I do. I own this, uh, chief editor, all that good stuff. And uh, we have a ton of awesome journalists in this. Tons. But this magazine is awesome. If you get a subscription, it means a world of awesomeness to me. Uh, AWCMAG.com. Just go to the magazine. If you want sub, it's AWCMAG.com forward slash sub. Super simple. Get a subscription. Make my day. Get some stickers. Get an awesome magazine. And post pictures all over because it's like my baby. But I am also a rep for Window Cleaning Resource. That's my main digs, of course. You can't make millions off of uh, running a window cleaning magazine. So I have to do something else to afford these awesome free shirts. If you want to put your order in through me, I don't sell it very well. Um, my number is 862-312-2026. That is my cell phone. 862-312-2026. Save it in your phone. Go back listen to this. Save it let me put all your orders in. Any order over 49 ships free right now. Um, but any size order. Big orders are awesome. Little orders are awesome. I just want all of your orders. So please, please let me put those in. That would be absolutely amazing and epic. And uh, yeah. Until next week, go out there, get your AWC magazine. Put your orders in through me. And more importantly, go out there and be epic.